In this video, I'm going to share with you the unboxing process, swatching, and also painting with the granulating watercolor set by Rembrandt. Royal Talons has so generously sent me a couple more watercolor sets. This is the granulating set that they have. And typically I prefer the pans over the tubes, but they sent me to the tubes this time, so it'll be a new experience for both of us. And I think you can consider me converted as well. So let's go ahead and unwrap this box. This collection has 12 10 milliliter tubes in the classic aluminum palette, nine of which are mono pigmented and they also have three dusk colors, which I'm very excited to try out. You'll see on each of the tubes that there is a G printed on the top area, and that stands for granulating. The set also includes a size 6 red sable brush, and this comes to a really nice point. So I'm really used to the sets with pans, and so I figured I would put these tubes into pans because otherwise it turns out to be really chaotic on my palette if I don't have like a designated area to put the colors. I lose track of what color is what and yeah, chaos ensues. So I have a bunch of these empty pans laying around and I figured I would play around with the palette and see if there's a way that I could set it up um, for future success. So I tried out a couple different combinations, but I figured along the bottom would be best, and that way, as I use the tubes down a little bit, they should be able to fit in there with the wells. If you're looking for a permanent solution, definitely check out E6000. It's waterproof, and I use this stuff all the time. You just need a little bit to secure the pan in place on the palette. If you really wanted to get it off, you could, but it may mess up that coating that's on the inside of the aluminum. If you're looking for a more temporary solution, check out magnet stickers, or Yoohoo makes this poster tacky like goo stuff that works well also. One thing that's nice about having the tubes is you can kind of customize your palette a little bit more, so I'm going to just reorder my colors for what works better for me. And I'd also like to share a couple tips on how to fill a pan. It seems like it's self-explanatory, but there's a couple things that I've learned over the years. So first of all, have your pan close by just in case your tube explodes with paint. I didn't really have that problem with these, but it sometimes happens and focus on distributing the paint around the edges of the pan. Always put the lid on. <laughs> and then go behind your squeeze with the toothpick and kind of push that paint around to the corners of the pan. Some colors may shrink more than others, but if you push the paint around and kind of stir it up in the middle, you're probably going to avoid air pockets a little bit better. Repeat this method as many times as you need to to fill up your pan completely, but I normally just kind of do it in one go. Um, I don't really care about my pans looking perfect, but it would be nice if they looked pretty good from the start. So each of the half pans hold two milliliters of paint, uh, and then there's the full pan, which holds four milliliters of paint. So these tubes have 10 milliliters of paint. I should be able to refill them about five times. I'm glad that I was able to find a way to arrange the palette to hold both the half pans and the tubes. And it came with this kind of like handy temporary tube placement <laughs> deal for packaging. But I think I'm just going to use it all the time to keep my tubes in there. Again, I normally prefer the pan version of the watercolor palettes just because they're smaller. I don't really need this much mixing room, but overall I think that this is going to work for me. So let's go ahead and start swatching. This is a Rembrandt cold press watercolor journal, and I wanted to make larger swatches with an area for the mass tone at the top. And I also wanted to look at the pigment numbers and everything, so I kind of went, um, a little bit heavy with the info on this one. But for the most part, like I mentioned earlier, we have nine monopigmented colors, 
So those are just going to be naturally granulating for the most part. And then we have three dusk colors, which have two pigments each in them, and I'll talk a little bit about each as we go. First color up is raw sienna. This is naturally a very transparent color, and you'll find it in a lot of different watercolor and uh, paint sets in general. Very popular color. Now we have greenish umber, and this is also a very transparent color that is commonly used in landscapes. Next up we have dusk yellow, and this is one of the double pigmented colors in the set. It has PBK 11, which if you've watched some of my other videos is a black granulating color. Next up is cobalt violet bright. This is a series three color because of the cobalt. And this is one of two reds in the set. The other one is the dusk pink, which is again the double pigmented color that has black oxide as one of the colors inside. Ultramarine Violet is next, and Ultramarine is a naturally granulating pigment, so you'll see that we have French Ultramarine in this set. These are both very beautiful colors. They're so vibrant. Now we have Cerulean Blue, and this is a semi-transparent color commonly used for painting skies. Then we have Cobalt Turquoise Green, another Series 3. Viridian is also in this set, and this is a very transparent color by nature, too. Then we have Green Earth, and this is my least favorite color in the set. It is so transparent, and I don't know why, but this color felt like it was 99% binder to me. And last up, we have Dusk Green. This is one of the, again, PBK 11 combo colors. And for granulating colors, you definitely have to let them dry before you know what they're going to look like because the pigments tend to settle in different clusters depending on what type of paper you're using. And here is the end result. Um, pretty beautiful selection of colors, very jewel-toned. And I think automatically my three favorites are the dusk colors. I'm familiar with these because I've used them before in the Van Gogh watercolor line. The majority of these colors granulate pretty well, except for Green Earth, which may be officially my least favorite color ever. I don't know if I got a bad batch or something in that tube, but it was super thick and gloopy when painting the swatch, and it didn't really seem to granulate either, so maybe there's just something wrong with the tube I got. But. Besides that, the colors granulated pretty well. Um, those dusk colors are just the most obvious out of all of them. Raw Sienna was a really smart choice to add because between that and the blues and all the greens, we should get a ton of beautiful landscape colors. In another life, I'll be a sensible person and I will do a landscape when the palette lends itself to that, but I'm not a sensible person and also, last time you guys really enjoyed the zombie painting that I did with the other granulating set, so I thought it would be kind of fun to do another one that's kind of like a sister piece to that. But I didn't want to do the mushrooms again. I thought it would be fun to do maybe like some orchids. And since there's so many of those like jewel tone colors in this set, I thought it might be really pretty. But I just wasn't sure about how many skin tones I could really paint with such a limited yellow and red. And I think that since it's kind of like a zombie, that the sickly colors would lend itself really well to the flesh, actually. And at the end of the day, this is just a sketchbook painting anyway, so we'll just see what happens. It's kind of experimental, honestly. So I just really wanted the granulations to do their thing for that first layer, so I flooded the watercolor paper with a skin tone and then put the dusk pink and yellow into the shadow areas. I used the spray bottle a lot throughout this and also the white acrylic ink. The spray bottle is nice for making areas more irregular. You can do backflows into your paint and add extra granulations. And the white acrylic ink is really nice if you need to build up an area and have it be more predictable. 
while also preserving the color scheme throughout. Keeping that color harmony is really important. I rarely was just using the white on its own. I was mostly tinting it with the watercolors, and you'll see me doing it in the separate palette because once that acrylic white dries, it doesn't keep so nicely in your other palette, so I like to keep it separate. But using a acrylic ink or any sort of waterproof um, when dry water medium with watercolors is really nice because you can add a lot of layering and dimension in your piece. I have a whole video on it if you want to check it out. I'll put the link up in the top corner for you. But for the majority of this piece, I was looking at a couple different photo references and I was just really exaggerating it while using the colors given to me. If I wasn't doing a YouTube video on this, I probably would have added a quinacridone uh, pink or magenta or something into this palette because I was a little frustrated with the limitations of the cobalt violet bright. It just wasn't vibrant enough for me and I think that this piece would have really benefited from like a, an actual red being used in the palette, but I wanted to show you guys what this palette could do. I think it also would have been really nice to have like a lemon yellow in here. I know that red and yellow normally are not granulating colors. Normally you see the granulation more with blues and browns. And typically people use granulating colors for landscapes, so I guess I'm just expecting the world, honestly. But um, if you guys are interested, please let me know down in the comments, but I would definitely like to do another video with this palette mixing standard watercolors with it and seeing what granulating colors we could come up with. But overall, I think that there is a couple really beautiful areas in this piece. I think that the dusk colors are doing the majority of the heavy lifting. They're adding the most interesting granulations and also offering the most contrast in the palette. So if you're interested in trying out the dusk colors, all you really need is black oxide. I guess I'm just a black oxide fan in general. And I really enjoy painting these granulation zombies, and you guys will definitely have to let me know if you'd like to see more of them, because I have a really fun time painting them, and if you like watching them come to life, then I would love to paint more of them for you. Um, so if you made it this far in the video, you are awesome. And thank you so much for watching. I hope that you guys have a wonderful week.